that uh, volume of prisms in cylinders. So what is volume? It's the space that a figure occupies and is measured in cubic units. If we find area, we're finding what we can wrap around the outside, right? And that's uh, two units times each other, so that's squared. Now we're going to find what fills these up. It's like how much milk fits in a milk carton. All right, so that would be three units multiplied together, and that's why it will be in cubic units. So you can see how much space this occupies. Now here's a little clever little principle here. Cavalieri's principle says if two figures have the same height and the same cross-sectional area at every level, then the volumes will be the same. So it doesn't matter if it's a right prism like this, or a, an oblique prism like this, if they are the same at the cross sections, which these are, these are called CDs, for those of you who don't know, that's what we listened to before we had MP3s, all right, and iTunes and all that fun stuff. The heights are the same, the cross sections are the same, so it doesn't matter that it's a right prism or an oblique prism, it'll give us the exact same volume, which is kind of nice. So let's take a look here. Volume of a prism is going to be B times H. Big B is the area of the base. Remember that will change depending on the shape of the base times the height. Remember the height is the distance between two bases. So let's take a look at this one. <clears throat> the base here is a rectangle. So the formula for a rectangle is length times width times height. <clears throat> Excuse me. So length times width, 24 times 20 times our height is 10. Multiply all those together, and I believe we get 4,800 cubic centimeters. So these centimeters times centimeters times centimeters would be cubic centimeters. All right. Volume of prism, pretty easy. A lot easier, a uh, lot less complicated than our uh, surface area formula. Volume of a cylinder, it's the exact same formula. The only difference is now we know our base is a circle, so we pi our square h. All right, so let's find this one. And look, is this, this is not a right prism, it's oblique, but it doesn't matter. Pi times r squared, r is our radius. If our diameter is two, our radius is one, times the height of three. One squared is one. One times three is three. So this would be three pi meters cubed. And again, if we wanted to get an approximation of that, this is the exact answer. We'd have to plug it into our calculator and find out what three times pi came out to be. So let's try these. All right, uh, let's do one at a time so we don't lose focus here. All right, first one, we have a base that's a triangle and our height goes across is 10. So let's take a look at this triangle. I'm going to uh, rearrange it a little bit. Um, so this side is 8. This base is 8. You can see this side is 8 as well. We need the height of this triangle. Alright, well, let's see. This, if this cuts it down, this is an equilateral triangle, so when we cut this down, it divides this into two pieces. So we know now, we now know, this is 8, and this is 4, and this is our height. So we can use the Pythagorean theorem. 8 squared equals 4 squared plus h squared. <clears throat> 64 equals 16 plus h squared. 64 minus 16 equals h squared. 48 equals h squared and take the square root of that. Let's see, we get the square root of 16 times the square root of 3 is 4 radical 3. So now we can plug that in. So volume equals big B times H. What's the formula for the area of a triangle? It's 1 half base times height times our height. Now we have to remember this height refers to the triangle. This height refers to the prism. So it's 1 half base, the base is 8, the height we found to be 4 radical 3, times uh, the height of the prism, the, the segment that connects the two bases is 10, 
All right, when we multiply that out, 1 half times 8 times 4 times 10, I believe we get 160 radical 3 inches squared. All right, let's take a look at the next one. Okay, this one's kind of different than we've done all year. This is a composite shape. In other words, there is a prism here that we can make. And then this is kind of a cylinder, but not the whole cylinder, it's half the cylinder. So if we want to follow the volume, we're going to have to do base times height of the prism. And then we're going to have to add 1 half pi r squared h of the cylinder. So let's look what we got here. So looking just at our prism here, let's just take this right here. That's 24 times 12 times the height of the prism is 10 plus 1 half times uh, pi r squared. Now what is r? r, well this this here is a diameter and that was 12. If it's 12 here, it's 12 here. So the radius would be 6. 6 squared times h, again our h is 10. Let's see what we get. 24 times 12 times 10 plus 1 half pi times 6 squared times 10. So let's see, 24 times 12 times 10, we get 2,880. Half of 6 squared is 36, half of 6 squared times 10, and we believe, I believe that's 180 pi inches cubed. Oh, this one was I, that's inches cubed. Sorry. Now this again here, right here, this is the exact answer. We could plug it into our calculator and get an approximation, which is probably a good idea. But right now, if I said, what is the exact answer, that's what you'd give me. If I asked for an approximation to the nearest tenth, you'd give me 3,445.5 inches cubed. All right, exact approximation. All right, Mr. Bross almost made the Olympics as a swimmer. Swimmer actually lost to Phelps in his first race at the trials. Uh, I mean, among other people, he lost to Phelps and others. Um, just go ahead and ask him about it. It's pretty amazing. Um, he's a really great swimmer at the University of Miami. You can see that's the Miami uh, colors right there. All right. He's trying to figure out the volume of the pool during the race, or so he claims. So let's see, the pool, a pool is a prism, right? So we could draw our prism. Whoa. All right. So uh, help him how much water does the pool hold? So it's 50 meters long. It's 25 meters wide and only 2 meters deep. So volume equals big B times H. So it's going to be 50 times 25, times 2, and that gives us 2,500 cubic meters of water. In other words, a lot of water, all right? So I want you to pause the video, try these two on your own, and then let's see how you did. All right, welcome back. So here we go. We want to find the volume, and that is big B times H. Let's see, what is our big B? It's a triangle, the base of the triangle, so the volume or the area of a triangle is one half, base times height times height. All right, so let's take a look at this triangle. All right, here's the triangle. Well, this is the height, so one half times the height is seven. That means this is the base, which is the same as this one, so it's 11 times the height of the prism, the distance between the two bases is 6. So 1 half times 11 times 7 times 6, and I believe you get 231 cubic feet. All right, let's find this one. Volume equals pi r squared h 
R squared, R is going to be 3 because the diameter is 6. 3 squared times H, ah, we know H, H is 3. 3 squared is 9, 9 times 3 is 27 miles cubed. A cylinder you'll never see in your lifetime, 27 miles cubed. All right, there you have it. Good luck on a 10.3 mastery check. As always, try to learn the material before you take the mastery check, people. Why retake it if you don't have to? You know we're not going to let you move on, so you might as well learn it the first time. Best of luck. See you next time.